Um, good morning, this is Kathy Hart at Art From The Heart, and as you can see from our entrance video, um, we have a lot of snow in Colorado today. So today we're going to talk about what do you do to make hypertuffa if you're in a cold environment. So many of the articles I've read or the videos I've watched have shown all these people out with these beautiful, beautiful landscape making huge, gigantic pots. I've modified that so that I can continue to make hyper tough all winter. So I'm going to walk you through that. First, I want to show you my art area because it's not very large. So this is my art area. I call it the art cove. And you can see it's an old workbench. My home is older. I've got art supplies up here. I do more than hyper tuffa. I paint, I do um, cement pots, I do everything. And in the winter, this is where I do it. And my workstation is actually the top of this small freezer. So I use smaller pots. Today I'm gonna use this pot, um, which is just a plastic pot. I'm gonna tape over those holes so that the um, hyper tuffa can't leak out. And then my inner mold is gonna be just this plastic pot. Now I've used this before so it's um, used. Okay, so I've greased my pots now and I actually use, um, everybody tells you to use cooking spray, but I've had better luck with just good old nursery Vaseline. So that's what I use in my pots. Um, and I found it's just a little stickier and it, um, it, it works better for me than the cooking oil. So I've got my bigger pot greased on the inside. I also have tape. I've taped up the holes on the outside. And then the inner pot is gooey. It's greased on the outside, um, all the way around with the bottom. So I'm ready to go. One thing I like about the Vaseline versus the oil is that I'm gonna do a mold with um, begonia leaves around the edges today. So they actually stick. You wanna put the leaf so that um, the back is facing you so that you've got the texture of that. So what I like about the Vaseline is that it's sticky enough that it sort of holds the leaf in place. Now, as you put your hyper tuffy in, you're gonna press that harder against the side. And so I'm gonna put, I think, all three leaves in here, but I may only have room for two, and that's okay too. Yeah, I've only got room for two leaves today. So we'll do one um, with a leaf on each side. And again, um, I just kind of stick them to the sides as best I can there. And I'll show you more as we get into the, the actually making the mold. I wanna show you guys real quick too. This is my art area. My little dog who's recovering from disc disease is in her playpen in the middle of it. But I have an art area here. It's not super big because it's my basement, but I do have a cart that's specifically for hyper tuffa, and I have all my supplies in there. This can go um, out to the garage in the summertime. Okay, so I'm ready to mix up my hyper tuffa. I use a little silicon measuring cup, which I found these I'm at one of the hobby stores, and they're great because the cement doesn't stick to them. And I'm going to use, for the sake of this experiment today, or uh, this mold today, I'm going to use two of each of my ingredients. I use peat moss, um, and this is just regular peat moss. I use kind of a fine blend. You can grate it if you don't buy a fine blend, but I find that kind of problematic. You just want to break it up a little bit. That's, that's peat moss. Then you want to use vermiculite, which... I've got both smaller and larger grades of this. Because this is a smaller pot, I prefer the smaller grade today. And then um, I'm also going to use um, gray Portland cement. My process for mixing the cement is slightly different than you'll see with the bigger hyper tougher projects where they mix it in a huge big uh, wheelbarrow or something out in their yard. I use a smaller pot, a cement pot, and I do the mixing by hand um, just with gloves on. And again, be sure you wear gloves. I double glove with Portland once it's wet because I'm that sensitive. I burned um, blisters in the ends of my fingers and not been able to use my fingers very well for a few days. So. Um, be sure that you wear the proper equipment.
Okay, so it's an equal part of water. Um, I start slow with the water, but you want to work it in and you do this with your hands. I just use my hands in these smaller projects and it works fine. I want to be sure I get all the way down to the edges of the bucket so that all the dry material on the bottom gets mixed in. Okay, so my final consistency is it'll make a ball and it can't squeeze water out of it. What I find is I leave this for about 10 minutes so the moss can absorb some of that. In our dry climate, I often have to add a little more water. All right, I'm going to add a little more water because it got a little dry. Um, if you ever feel burning while you're mixing this, that's when you want to stop and change your gloves out. And once it's a good consistency, then you can start your bowls. So I'm going to bring my mold up front so you can see. And again, I have my begonia leaves in there. And I'm going to take them out for just a second while I do the bottom inch. Um, and you want at least an inch. That was one of the mistakes I made when I first got into hyper tuffo was you want at least an inch on the bottom. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but I'm putting enough in so that I've got a good thick bottom. Otherwise, you can get crumbly. And with hyper tuffa, I drill it afterwards. I drill it the day afterwards for the hole um, for drainage. I don't put anything in there to try to make it like I do with make a hole. So once I've got a good inch of hyper tuffa in the bottom, I'm going to put my leaves back where I want them so that they're positioned correctly. And these are big leaves. I work them down into the base just a little bit. And I'll show you what they come out like in just a minute. And again, you're putting the cement against the back side of them so that anyone is that veiny texture is just awesome um, on your pot. So once they're positioned in there, once I've got my leaves positioned in there, you can kind of see, um, then I can start building up the sides. And again, you want at least an inch thick um, so that you won't crumble. I start really small um, or sort of around and work in circles. Um, to keep the leaves in place as I move up. So while I'm doing this, maybe I'll talk a little bit about some of the advantages of using hyper tuffa pots. And they're a lot like terracotta in that they're breathable um, because of the moss and vermiculite in here and the moss that will eventually break down. You do end up with a porous pot um, that will breathe on its own. Uh, so similar advantages to terracotta. I like that, and they also have great drainage. They're not the best for holding water unless you seal them because of their porousness. You can kind of see how I've got that one side starting to build there. I wish you could see better as I was working, but um, I don't have anybody else to hold the camera in limited space. I keep building on the sides as I go around each turn so that they're nice and thick. And we'll put the center mold in here when we've finished um, building our sides up. Okay, now I've got it fairly evenly, it's heavy too, I've got it fairly evenly built up around the sides, um, you can see that. And um, now I want, this is what I want my mold for to keep it from caving in, so I'm going to squish this in here down to the bottom and I'm going to have to take some of that off but I around the edges perhaps but mostly I want to make sure right now that all my edges look even and I'm going to press that in around that inner pot so that it's even and remember that hyper tuffa you've got about 24 to 48 hours to do some amendment if your mold isn't perfect you can do some um, carving on it um, you can do filing, you can do reshaping, much more than cement, which once it's hard, it's a done deal. So once I'm fairly sure that I've got an even edge on that, which you can see with this, um, then, then I'm going to put some kind of a weight in there. Now, I don't mind the rounded edges kind of like what I've got here. If you want a flatter edge, you'd have to take some of that um, off. And 
I, for my weight, actually use one of my whole things of paint, acrylic paint, because they have a pretty good weight to them. And uh, just press it down a little bit. One thing with Hyper Tough it is it's got to dry um, slowly, cure slowly. I will then cover this um, with plastic so that it can cure slowly. And I want to show you some of my finished products at various stages next. Okay, guys, one more thing. I made this little leaf mold over my, out of my leftover my begonia mold. Um, and I made sure that I sprayed it and got it really wet after I got done. And then I'm going to cover it um, in plastic overnight. And tomorrow it should be dry enough to take it out and, and kind of um, etch the edges a little bit if they need it. Um, and there's the pot we just did. So this pot here I made probably a month ago. I've had a contractor in my basement, so probably over a month ago actually. I just haven't gotten down here. Um, and so I keep it in that same sack that it was in um, to keep it moist. You can see the color of it. This one also has a begonia leaf in it that you can see there. I, I will paint this before I sell it, um, but you can see the imprint there a little bit. This one still has that dark color because it's not, it's still been in the sack. So it's not all the way dry. And they should stay in the sack for at least three weeks. So this is one that I finished a few weeks ago. And after they spend the three weeks in the sack downstairs, I actually bring mine upstairs. This is my bedroom. That's my winter um, place to cure these pots. But they go in water, a vinegar solution. Um, to help leach out the alkaline um, stuff that's part of the cement so that the plants will be okay in them. So they sit in here for a week, week and a half. So here's some of my other pots that are ready for painting. These are actually been cured and been through the water process that I just showed you. And um, these are ready to go. This one also has a begonia leaf. And this one I carved to be the if you can see it, I'm sorry, I'm in my own shadow. It's got the cat petroglyph from um, Petrified Forest, if you've ever seen that. So I'm gonna paint that in and do some fun things with that. And um, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you some of my finished products that are at Creative Corner and will be on available on Etsy, some of the smaller ones um, later in the spring. So please follow my website, www.artfromtheheart dot com and also visit um, us at Creative Corner www.creativecornermontrose.wordpress.com. We'll catch you next time.